internet, welcome to Game Theory, the gaming show with the most smartest viewers on the interwebs. Take for instance Izzy, a loyal theorist so fueled by a mix of intense intellectual curiosity and incredible boredom that he solved one of gaming's most hot button topics. For those of you who are new to this rodeo, Jinx is Game Theory's fourth greatest arch nemesis, just behind Ignorance, Yarn Bombers, and Bob Chipman the Game Overthinker. For two episodes, we covered everything from classical opera to 90s Japanese fashion trends to find an explanation for her appearance. I even wrote my own Christmas poetry in an episode that would make the likes of Bill Shakespeare jealous. Consider this a shameless plug to watch those episodes. To recap, in January of 2000, while everyone else celebrated surviving the computer uprising known as Y2K, others rang in the birth of a new millennium by dragging up the racial hatred of the past thousand years, claiming that Pokemon, a kid's game produced by squeaky clean Nintendo, featured offensive stereotypes in the black-faced, big-lipped character of Jinx. But despite all of our research, we were unable to decide 100% one way or the other about Jinx's inspiration. Enter Izzy, a veritable Fox Mulder of gaming theorists, believing that the truth was indeed out there and then writing in to share his discoveries. So today's episode is brought to you almost entirely by this man, Izzy, Olympic mascot, Digimon celebrity, carbonated fruit beverage, as he provides the gaming world with what I believe to be the definitive final answer on the infamous racist Pokemon. We begin in Japanese folklore with the Yamauba, or Mountain Crone, a supernatural monster who cannibalistically feeds on unsuspecting travelers with a specific craving for children. Yeah, that sounds like it really fits into a game where the mascot is cuter than a kitten in a cup. But hold on to your negative thumb, Joe Skeptic, because in most translations, she's described as having long hair that is golden white. She's also known to wear around a tattered red kimono. So that fulfills two key elements of Jinx's appearance right off the bat. Of course, it's not a perfect match. We're overlooking Yamauba's second demon mouth. You know, the one she keeps hidden under her hair on the back of her head. Don't really remember that one being a part of Jinx's design but hey, no one's perfect. Except my wife Stephanie, of course. Sorry, as a newlywed husband, I'm required to do things like that. So appearances aside, what other similarities are there? For that, we must go to the theater. Specifically, no theater, a form of classical Japanese musical drama that dates back to the 14th century. So sit back as game theory transports you to ancient Japan to tell the tale of Yamanba. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a female dancer called Hyakuma Yamamba who embarked on a pilgrimage accompanied by her attendants. While traveling northeast, they arrive at a river boundary where the road diverges into three paths. They ask directions from a local who advises them that the mountain pass is far too steep, as it is the path Buddha himself takes as he comes to receive souls. The dancer decides that, as she is a pilgrim, it is fitting that she proceed on foot to take that very path. She has not gone far when the sun sets unexpectedly, and they are offered lodging by a mysterious old woman who demands that the dancer perform. They quickly realize the old crone is the supernatural being Yamauba. The dancer dares not refuse Yamauba's request for fear of being eaten. But it is Yamauba herself who performs the long dance which closes the play. How does this little foray into story time relate to Jinx? I refer you now to Jinx's entries from various Pokedexes, uh, Pokedexi, Poke Pokedexes, throughout the franchise's history. Pokemon Red and Blue. Jinx. It seductively wiggles its hips as it walks, 
It can cause people to dance in unison with it. Pokemon Yellow appears to move to a rhythm of its own as if it were dancing. Pokemon Gold It rocks its body rhythmically. It appears to alter the rhythm depending on how it is feeling. Pokemon Silver It speaks a language similar to that of humans. However, it seems to use dancing to communicate. Pokemon Sapphire A jinx sashays rhythmically as if it were dancing. Its motions are so bouncingly alluring, people seeing it are compelled to shake their hips without noticing. Note the constant mention of dancing and little else. Not its ice or psychic abilities, not even its female appearance, and this is throughout the entire series. Yama Uba is also known for her seductive dance. Coincidence? I think not. So now we have a connection to Jinx's appearance and behavior, but what about her ice type? In another no-drama, Yama Uba, Dame of the Mountain, the title character is portrayed as a fairy. Hey, listen! who has the power to cover the mountains in snow during the winter months. And sure, ice powers are fine and all, but how could a cannibalistic child-eating demon possibly be related to Christmas, like in that banned Pokemon episode, you ask? Throughout most of her history, yes, the mountain crone was seen as a purely evil creature, but recently she's taken on more positive aspects in the public eye, with modern representations of the Yama Uba as a sort of harvest deity. In fact, around Around Nagano, the story goes that Yama Uba descends every 19th and 20th of December carrying a magical gourd to buy large amounts of sake. Her very presence temporarily causes the market value of sake to rise. Admittedly, a folktale created by the sake industry to sell more alcohol in December is not the same as a holiday hyped up by toy stores to sell more Tamagotchis and Pogs during Christmas, but you gotta admit, if Jinx showed up in the anime carrying around a bag of booze, Nintendo would have a whole other set of controversies on its hands. Which brings us back around to the initial question. What about the black face and exaggerated lips? Take a look at this. It's the costume for a no performer in the role of Yama Uba. Notice the heavy tanning or black face? Think back to our discussion on Gangro, where Japanese girls darken their faces to look brown. Unlike some forms of Gangro, which began as rebellion against tradition or as a means of mimicking black celebrities, there's actually another variety of Gangro known as Yamamba, a name derived from and in homage to the classic Japanese character Yama Uba. So is Jinx racist? I feel 100% confident saying no. Like most other Pokemon, her origins harken back to Japanese folklore. In the end, the moral of the story is this. People can make a fuss and then wait 12 years for an online web series to find the answers for them, or they can just do a little research before flipping out. Ha! <laughs> uh, who am I kidding? Bring it on, world! I'm ready to clean up your stupidity. But hey, it's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. I have a dream.